anyway, I'm gonna try this again. Get to the uh, my first time in a long time vlog on this super hot freaking day. Super hot fire. Oh, my ass is hot. Hi, I'm Chad, and welcome to Virtual Reality. Now, I like to start my vlogs in virtual reality because it is a place where we can go fast. So without further ado, let us go fast. Back to reality. So I think it's been about nine months since I posted my last vlog. And there have been uh, quite a few extenuating circumstances that have contributed to that. And today I'm just gonna give you guys the sort of quick, but kind of elaborate, concise story. So, flashback to January, or I suppose December. I think the last vlog I posted was like, I should check this for accuracy, but it was very end of December, very beginning of January. And if you watch that vlog and watch this vlog, you'll notice, maybe, I'm on a different motorcycle. This is Brandy. She's a fine girl. She's a 2012 Daytona 675R, and I'm going to do a full video just kind of going over her and everything and my experience buying her, but first, we need to talk about why I haven't posted a vlog in five ever. What up, my fellow Triumph Rider? You are a squid. I know it's hot, but I want to stay safe. If you go plan for the slide, not the ride, as they say. So, back at the beginning of the year, I noticed my old Daytona Emma. My, she was a 2006 Triumph Daytona 675, beautiful red. My babby had her for almost four years. Uh, she was dripping some oil. Upon further inspection, found it was the O-ring for the water pump, oil pump drain tube. Uh, the design is that so if the water pump or the oil pump fails, they don't cross-contaminate. You don't end up with oil in your coolant or coolant in your oil. I began to investigate. The first thing to do was to drain my oil because I had to do that to remove the pan and get to the O-ring. Upon draining my oil, I found a big chunk of metal. Like not, not just like a little shard of metal. Like I'll see if I can uh, get a photo of this chunk of metal and post it up right here. But it was almost an identical match to a piece that I had found about two years earlier. At that time, I dropped the oil pan, pulled the stator cover, the clutch cover, the timing cover, got up in there with like a boroscope and a flashlight. The bike was riding totally fine before that. So a good friend of mine, Chen Lar, who is a basically super awesome mega mechanic, he and his dad, I asked them for advice and they asked me how the bike was riding before I had found the chunk of metal or right before I had drained it and all that. And I was like, oh, runs great. No issues. Transmission shifts fine. Engine revs good. Uh, they just recommended that I Man, this tall first gear has really got me. I always think I have another gear to downshift into. But that's one of the differences between this bike and my old bike that I'll need to get to in another video. 
So found a piece of metal, slapped everything back together. Bike rode great, didn't have any problems with it for two years. And then I find this piece of metal. So I'm alarmed and I'm like, okay, something's definitely like going wrong here. I need to figure out what it is. I'm trying to think about the most effective value I can get out of my money and my time and I work full time. The time investment and also the space because I live in an apartment and have a small one car garage which I need to park my car in along with my motorcycle didn't really give me a whole lot of space to work. A very kind friend Mr. Drew allowed me to use his garage for the project which we decided would be just doing a motor swap. So I found a low mileage, lowish mileage engine on eBay at 15,000 miles. Seller had 100% positive feedback. I felt pretty confident in my purchase. So I bought it. And when it showed up, it was there were just problems. The motor was seized, not really sure how. We were able to break it free with a three foot breaker bar and then it turned freely, but didn't get it wired up enough to do a compression test or anything like that. Uh, the seller had provided compression numbers beforehand, which I suspect are garbage or were tested before whatever happened to the motor happened. In addition to that, when I went to go replace the thermostat, because I had just changed the thermostat in my old bike to one from a newer design, my old thermostat had failed, so it was stuck open and the bike would rarely reach operating temperature. So I had a brand new one. When I went to go swap the one that was on the motor that I bought from eBay, I found just nasty coolant oil, like really thoroughly mixed in the cylinder head. It smelled like a swamp in there, it was bad. So, got back in touch with the seller who had informed me that it was pressure washed and I'm assuming probably not covered, intake and exhaust ports not covered because I also found some oil in the oil pan when I went to go change the gasket to the newer design that Triumph um, initiated in I think 2009 with a different oil pressure regulator for higher oil pressure because it's important for engine laugh. I was like, dude, this is not going to work. I have no confidence installing this in my motorcycle. And I already dropped my old engine out of my bike at this point. So I was like, you know, you guys got to take this back. I got to get back to square one. And they said they would. And then weren't really willing to immediately accept fault. So I worked with them. I talked to the guy on the phone. His name was Joe. Seemed trustworthy in the moment and you know concerned and just so the agreement was I would ship the motor back to them they would break it apart determine if it was fit for use if it was fit for use I wouldn't get my shipping back but I would get a refund but if the motor was not fit for use I would get a full refund I said fine that's great open to return through eBay Time passes and he's offered to help me work out shipping the engine back to him because it has to go freight. It's a motorcycle engine, it's heavy and it goes on a pallet. I have no experience shipping anything freight, so I'm happy to accept the help. And you know, he just kind of drags his feet. I'm not able to get in touch with him and Eventually, I think the day after my return had expired through eBay, he finally got back to me, said he was scheduling a truck, gave me a bill of lading, said we were all good to go, they'd pick it up, confirmed I wouldn't need to pay anything to the driver at this point in time, and we were good to go. So the driver shows up and informs me that uh, cash is due then and there for shipping. And I tell him that's a mistake, that's not what uh, myself and the seller had agreed on. So he instructed me to check a different box, initial it, and it would be build collect. I was like, okay, that's fine. They have a freight account. You know, they'll incur it on that. Should be good. I ship it back. I think we're all good. About a week later, I get a call from a UPS hub uh, in Fullerton, not too far away from where I live, letting me know that I had a motorcycle engine ready for pickup. And I'm just kind of like, 
what are you guys talking about? I just shipped the motorcycle engine back and they said, nope, you definitely have a motorcycle engine here. We have this email that says that you made a mistake shipping and I'm just like, what? So this guy had gone through the trouble of creating a bogus email address to represent, misrepresent me and sent UPS a letter of authority instructing them to send the motor back to me and send me all of the bills for all of the freight in all directions. And I get the bill and it's like $1,300. I'm like, you guys have got to be kidding me that I didn't send that. This is ridiculous. You guys need to fix this. I'm still fighting with them with uh, PayPal and eBay to get my money back. And eventually I was able to prove it because dumbasses did confirm delivery when it was shipped back to them the first time before doctoring this bogus letter of authority and everything and shipping it back to me. So I was able to provide that to PayPal. They gave me my money back, case closed. That was good. However, the UPS thing was a huge pain in the butt. Although I will say they made it as good of an experience as possible. I worked with this customer service rep. Her name was Cassie. I want to shout her out because she really made my, made my year with this. That would have really, really sucked if I had gotten stuck with those fraudulent freight charges, but she was able to work through all the case and everything, take all the information I provided her, build a case for me, and they were able to prove it was fraud and zero it out. So that was great, but man, what a headache. And I just, kind of hurt my faith in humanity a little bit until Cassie saved the day but man what a freaking headache that was so in the midst of all this I realized that you know I don't really have a lot of other options in terms of fixing my bike I could roll the dice on another eBay motor which I wasn't all that comfortable with all things considering after this experience so I decided, you know what, I'm gonna break my motor apart, try to figure out what was being spit out in there in pieces, and then just rebuild it myself. You know, it was running fine before that. I feel like I probably shouldn't need to replace a lot of stuff. So, let's see about that. So I did it. I tore my motor down, which was a really great learning experience. It was cool. I ended up buying a Hanes service manual and just really got down into it. Pulled the cylinder head off split the cases, got the transmission out, everything completely disassembled. And when I took it apart, it didn't really look too hot. Um, it was obvious that uh, at some point in time, a chain had snapped and cracked the engine case, which had been repaired with JB Weld. And I gotta say it was actually a decent job, but the oil pan, and I noticed this uh, when I first found that piece of metal back in 2017 that I was curious about. Oh, gotta love the quick shift, though. But the oil pan had been silicone sealed back on, the proper gasket hadn't been used, and I noticed the JB Weld and silicone sealant on the inside of the engine case as well as the outside. So I knew something had happened. I was also part of the reason I was cool with continuing to ride the bike after finding the first piece of metal. I thoroughly cleaned out the oil pan and everything in there to make sure that I wasn't gonna find any other surprises. So since another piece came out, I'm assuming there was something broken, but I completely disassembled the motor and I couldn't find anything with a big chunk of metal like that apparently missing. So I was a little spooked. And in addition to that, so my engine had 36,000 miles on it and about a thousand miles of those were on race tracks and I ride my bikes hard. I like to have fun with them. I needed all new connecting rod bearings, which not really a big deal. Crankshaft was in good shape. Figured if I'm gonna do this, I have the pistons out. I might as well change the rings. A ring set for each piston, I think was about a hundred bucks from Triumph. And then re-sleeving the block was gonna be $200 uh, cylinder. And it just added up really quick. I needed a new cam chain. I needed new guides. I was looking at spending between two and three thousand dollars on parts and then I was going to need to take the time to rebuild it myself and it was just it was going to be pretty ridiculous so I just decided that it was in my best interest to
just start take that three thousand dollars and just start shopping for another bike that brings us to brandy and that is where i'm going to end this vlog thanks for watching if you enjoyed like comment subscribe feel free to dm me any questions or anything about my experience be happy to provide the name of the ebay seller that totally tried to bone me so that you can be wary too let me know see you in the next one Woo.